Tiny little thing, super early. Well, welcome to today's workshop. Uh, my name is Paul Lewis. I'm the Director of Job Assistance with the People's Resource Center. Uh, also with me is one of our job coaches, Sarah Heistum. She's going to be presenting the workshop today. Uh, so just a couple of quick guidelines for this. Uh, if you go ahead and keep yourself on mute, just so we don't have any background noise. But uh, if you do have any questions uh, throughout the workshop, feel free to unmute yourself and ask. We'll keep it pretty casual. Uh, if you have the ability to turn on your video, we'd love to see your face. If your video camera is not working, that's okay too. Um, just because it's a smaller group tonight, you can go ahead and uh, just unmute and ask questions. You don't need to use the chat function, um, but we're willing to stay on uh, anytime after the presentation. If you have multiple questions and you just want to wait, that's fine too. Uh, for best viewing, uh, for the best viewing experience, if you just go to view options in the top right hand corner and go side by side mode, that will allow you to see the presentation as well as the face of the person that is presenting. Um, everything that is said in this is confidential. So even though we are recording the presentation, we do have the ability to um, edit it so we can edit out any questions you have if you're not personal or if you're not comfortable with that personal information being shared. Uh, we wanna thank Megan from the Wooddale Public Library for hosting us tonight. So a little bit of background about the People's Resource Center. Um, we are a, uh, a social service agency um, that covers all of DuPage County. Um, so anybody that is a resident of DuPage County is able to become a client and have access to our services. Uh, we do have a food pantry that uh, has multiple times throughout the week where um, residents can stop by and pick up food. Uh, it is currently a curbside pickup model. We're still kind of in COVID operations just because uh, uh, it has run so smoothly once we've kind of implemented the curbside pickup. So uh, we're going to kind of keep that going for a while, which is really great. Uh, we also offer a lot of empowerment services, such as our adult learning and literacy, our computer training and access, uh, our social services, and of course, job assistance. All of those services are done uh, virtually. We are in the process of kind of planning what uh, the return to in-person looks like. So I'm hoping that that's going to be available soon. That way we can all, uh, we can open up our offices and give uh, our clients access to computers and all of our on-site services as well. Um, a little bit of information about uh, our job assistance program. And we'll actually review this again at the end of the presentation. So we offer a variety of different services to PRC clients who are job seekers. Uh, first and foremost, we offer our one-to-one -one job coaching and that's uh, an individualized mentoring uh, experience with a job coach who can help you in any areas of the uh, job search that you're looking for, whether it's um, you know learning how to uh, properly interview for uh, a job, whether it's like if you need to know how to apply for a job, if you need to know what websites are good, if you just need help uh, updating your resumes, we have uh, people that can help you with all of those things. Um, we also have a uh, PRC job board where I work directly with employers throughout DuPage County. Uh, they send me their open positions and I put them on the job board. So these are employees or employers that we have a direct connection with. Uh, so it's a good way to kind of see what jobs are available in and around the area in which you live. Uh, and we also have uh, KX self-assessment skills. So if you're kind of looking to see, um, you know, what industries or what careers might be a good fit for you, uh, we have skills tests that you can take to see uh, what jobs you might be a good fit for. And this is all, of course, free of charge to PRC clients. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to pass this over to Sarah. She is going to talk to you today about resumes versus robots. Great. Thank you so much, Paul. So I'm Sarah. I'm one of the PRC job coaches, and I've been a coach for about three years now. And uh, my work history is exactly um, this job, people helping people get jobs. I was a recruiter for several years, and I've also been a career advisor at universities, and now I do it all independently. Um, so I'm so excited to present this because this is one of the topics that is something I think employers know more about than candidates. So we've all had that feeling of sending our resume in and having it fall into a black hole, which is no fun. Um, but this should explain a lot of this. It's how you're, you know, to get your resumes passed, um, an applicant tracking system, which is what we'll define and talk about tonight and get into the um, hands of the hiring manager. So thanks. So just first, um, I wanna talk about job hunting in the digital age. And even, you know, what is an applicant tracking system so we understand what the good news is and the not so good news. So if you haven't heard of it, an applicant tracking system, also known as an ATS, so we'll be using that abbreviation tonight, is a type of software that companies use 
to help gather job applications and then organize the resumes and job applications that that come in from people like you that they want to hire. Um, so they've been used for quite a long time since the 2000s, although now they've evolved um, and um, companies can pay for an applicant tracking system to not only collect job applications and resumes and cover letters and put that in a database for them to use and look at you as a candidate, but they have also integrated it and integrated ATSs into um, places where they can post jobs on multiple boards, um, job boards. That's probably why you sometimes see something posted on Indeed, but then also posted on LinkedIn. And that's really because of these ATSs that companies can now pay for and use to attract candidates like, like yourself. Um, so that's why job applications are filled out mostly online now. And, you know, used to be that you'd have to go in or mail your resume in. And that's why, you know, we don't, use that anymore. So because we're applying online and now this job hunting in the digital age, there is some great news about doing about using them. But then there's also so not so great news. So good news first, um, applicant tracking systems are always free. They're free for you to use because the employers pay for them. So just sort of a side note on that too, if you ever come across a job board that's asking you to pay, you don't want to do that. Everything should be free since the employers are paying for these. You know, secondly, it's a faster way to apply. Um, you can save time. You don't have to, um, you know, look through one ads like you used to do or mail your resume in or even walk into an employer and hand your resume in. It certainly saves time. You can certainly send your resume to multiple places or through job applications online. So, you know, it saves you time too. And it actually helps recruiters because they can focus on looking at your job application that you submitted online and see if you're a really good candidate. So there's also some not so good news. So even though applicant tracking systems are good and help you apply easier, easier and companies look at your application, it's the digital age robot part, which is sometimes applicant tracking systems can not let your resume go through and employers aren't seeing your resume. Um, employers need to, you know, or employers use these for it to be easy, but sometimes it actually reverses on the candidate and your resume doesn't get through to the hiring manager. So next slide. Okay. So this is just an article that we really liked that came into the Wall Street Journal. If you Google applicant tracking systems and how to get past applicant tracking systems, I think today I looked up and it was hundreds and hundreds of articles through Google. But one of the main things and why we like this one is that it just emphasizes how much things have changed in job applying and submitting resumes. And that also, um, for every one job posted, companies get hundreds of applications. So, you know, that's very important to know that not only are you, you know, competing with a lot of people, you need to get your resume and cover letter through this applicant tracking system. And we're going to help you do that. That's one of the things us job coaches do at PRC. Um, another thing just to remember is sometimes because companies get so many applications, they may not post that job for very long. So I just like to remind people that I work with that, you know, when you see something, prepare to apply for it within the first week, just so that job doesn't go away um, because they applied, because companies posted it and they got so many applicants. So next slide. Okay, so this is just to let you know where hiring managers are coming from. And I think that sometimes it's good to understand as a candidate where and what is happening on the other side after you're applying. So I mentioned that recruiters, hiring managers, the people at the companies do get a lot of resumes for every job. I know when I was a recruiter, we would sometimes post a job and the next day we'd have 500 applicants for it, which is incredible, good, but incredible and hard to go through. Um, and, you know, because the hiring managers can be so overwhelmed, they rely on their applicant tracking systems to sort of sift through who's really a good candidate. Um, and, you know, statistically, 
75 about percent of applicants are not qualified for the job. And again, as a recruiter, I had that personal experience. Um, I had some specific technical positions I'd be recruiting for and no offense to people that submitted their resumes, but they might have not had any sort of degree or background at all in that. So that's sort of where, you know, the applicant tracking systems do help the overwhelmed hiring manager. But it's also just a reminder that when you are applying for something as a candidate, you really should make sure that you're at least 75 to 80 percent meeting the qualifications of it. And that way you're helping the hiring managers. Next slide. I mentioned this in the beginning, the black hole. This has all happened to us. Um, you've applied and then never heard back. And this is the most frustrating thing and probably the biggest complaint that everyone has when applying for jobs. But the good news is that, first of all, PRC job coaches can help you. That's the first good news. And then second, you know, we want to make sure that your resume is being seen by those hiring managers and not going through or not falling into a black hole. So these are things that can easily be fixed so you don't fall into a black hole. And we're going to talk more about them tonight. Next slide. OK, so you definitely can beat the bots. Um, there are really two main ways where you can beat these robot applicant tracking system. So we're gonna focus on two main things. The first is how your resume looks, the formatting, um, the, the font, the headings, et cetera. And then also what your resume says. These are keywords as well as um, action verbs that you can use. And this is a way you can definitely um, get your resume if you're qualified for the position through the applicant tracking system, then get it into a hand of a human. Next slide. Thanks. Um, actually, I'm going to skip this one because we already kind of talked about that. I wanted to do it in the first part. Okay, so first formatting. This is the first way to get your resume past the applicant tracking system in that robot. So Take a step back, what is formatting and why would it really even matter? So formatting can be a couple of things. One, it can be the way that you present information on your resume. So you might have heard of chronological resume. That's a resume where you start with your most recent experience and then work backwards. There are a couple of types of resumes, which if you need help with this, deciding which one is good for you, certainly talk to us. Um, but the first thing with formatting is how that information is laid out. The second thing of um, that you want to think about formatting is just how the resume looks, not just the order of the sections, but the font, the font size, whether things are bolded or italicized. This is important just because a lot of applicant tracking systems cannot be that great or might not be that great at uploading your resume into that database where they're trying to collect that information. So that's why we're going to help you through this. And then even if you want to work one on one with a job coach, to help you get your resume past, past that. So these are easy things that you can do to get yourself out of that black hole. Next slide. All right, so again, to formatting, we wanna use standard resume headings. When we think of a heading, we think about first your contact information, that's most important, but we also wanna think about you know, the summary that you might put at the top or, you know, a skill section that you might put at the top, anything that might capture that recruiter's attention. Um, you know, we do suggest not doing so much a career objective. The summary at the top is a little bit more appealing right now to employers, but you also want to, um, you know, show that um, your resume is exactly fitting or at least a fitting very much the, the actual job application that you're seeing. And we'll, we'll talk even more about this in the next slide. All right, so this is just a little um, information for you because fonts are important. Um, we actually have some fonts here that recruiters look or hiring managers look for the most. Ariel, um, I'm sorry, Ariel, um, even Times New Roman can be on that list. It is, it's a font that, um, 
specifically not to get too technical, but they are um, serif fonts, so sans serif fonts, which don't have little squigglies at the end. Um, but anyway, you can use one of those fonts. It'll be able to get through the applicant tracking system and get your resume uploaded into the database. You can also use things like bold or italicized to sort of point out for a recruiting manager or hiring manager what things you want them to look at in your resume. Next slide. So this is important. We wanted to bring it up in, in the presentation because you do want to standardize your dates of employment. And this is something you can see here how to do it. That is something that can tr trip you up getting through the applicant tracking system. So we researched this and the best ways to format your dates are the correct ways that we have on this on this slide. Um, so again, not that there's anything wrong with the other ways, it's still the same information. However, there is this way that you can look on on the slide that is the way that'll get you through the applicant tracking system. So we want you to know that. All right, next slide. Okay, so we wanna talk about keywords. You've probably heard this a lot if you've been reading about how to do a resume or you know, people say, oh, your resume should have keywords um, when you apply for a position. So just to let you know what keywords are and why they're important. So keywords are the words used in the job application that indicate the skills, the knowledge, the accomplishments, the requirements, that are for the position. So the easiest way I explain this to people is that if you look at the job description, if you're just taking a look at it, and then you put your resume right beside it, you want that recruiter to be able to see, oh, here's the job description, and here's how your resume matches it. So that's a really easy way just to start off thinking, do I have the right keywords in my resume? Because for instance, you might have a resume where you've done exactly what the job description has said, right? But maybe the job description has a word that they're using. I'll just think of this off the top of my head. The, the job description has the word administrative assistant, right? But maybe because of your last job and title, you weren't called an administrative assistant. Maybe you were called a you know, executive assistant or something else. So you're still doing the same things, but that job description has that word of administrative assistant and you have done those things, but you're calling it an executive assistant. So you wanna bridge those things by making sure that you have the keywords that are in the job description also in your resume so that the employer can see that you have that correct experience. It may just be a different word, if that makes sense. Um, next slide. So another thing we want in your resume, and again, we can help you with this at PRC, is action verbs. So action verbs really simply are verbs that provide instant information about what action or what you have done. A lot of times resumes start with um, responsible for or um, things like that. And those words are first things hiring managers have seen sort of over and over again. And second, when a hiring manager looks at that in your resume, it's not exactly clear right away what you have done. So for instance, you know, answered X number of calls in a day or presented, you know, X number of presentations in a week, the action verb really gives the employer that snap of exactly what you're doing. And again, you can use those action verbs as part of the keywords. If you're looking at the job description and they're looking for someone who's you know, generated, managed, presented, look at your action verbs and make sure that you have similar action verbs for what they're looking for in the job description. Because we want you to show off your compliments, bottom line. All right, next slide. Okay. So this is another thing that we want in your resume. And again, all these things just not only help your resume get through the applicant tracking system, but they have impact. So the hiring manager is like, yes, they're a great fit for the job. I want to call them for an interview. And I talked about this just a second ago in terms of metrics. Like you want to give the employer specific information about what you've done. So example, instead of just saying, you know, I answered the phone for, you know, an executive during the day. You want to say, I answered at least, 
you know, 50 to 100 calls for an executive, you know, for my manager every day and made sure that the most important ones, you know, 25% of the most important ones or 25% got through to what he needed or she needed to see. So those types of metrics that give numbers to the things that you've did, things that you did, that helps the hiring manager understand the scale and the impact of what you did at your job. Next uh, slide. Okay, so again, um, we want you to, you know, take these resume tips. We want to make sure that your resume is impactful and has accomplishments, not just job duties. Um, and I gave some examples of those, like answering phones versus how many calls you answered and how you handled them. Um, and then, of course, last thing, use spell check. You know, again, I come back to using the job coaches and the resume writers here at PRC. We are free and we can help you with these little things um, from making your accomplishments impactful. And then also, you know, working with you on the format of the resume so it gets through the applicant tracking systems. All right, next slide. So the best resume format, I get a lot of questions about that. We, we all do here at PRC. Um, so my first uh, advice, first piece of advice for that is that usually the employer has instructions when you're in or filling out your job application online about what type of format they want. So for instance, if they do want a PDF format, you'll wanna make sure you upload it. However, most, or I should say, a lot of the companies you apply to do want that Word format. So the reason, and the reason they want it is because Word uploads easily into the applicant tracking system. So you wanna make sure that one, you're following their instructions, but two, if you're doing a Word resume, you make sure that it's formatted in the way that can be uploaded into the applicant tracking system. And just that's why they asked for a Word version since it can be easily uploaded. Um, and you know, if you are sending a resume, again, PDF, they might ask for that. It's easy to convert that Word resume into that. So that's what I usually tell people that I work with. Just have a Word resume that you can easily convert if they do ask for a PDF or they ask for your resume, say, as an attachment um, and an email so that you can easily have, you know, just both of those versions. But your main version should be a Word version. Next slide. Okay, little quiz. Um, looking at this resume and everything we talked about with formatting and, um, you know, keeping things, you know, clean, no lines, um, the type of dates to, to that work on a resume that goes through the ATS. Um, this is our little quiz. Will this pass the ATS system? Um, and next slide is... No, the first one won't, but this one will. And you can see right away why. We took out the lines. Um, it's formatted in um, a way with the dates are formatted in a way that they would pass through the applicant tracking system. So this is just one way that is really going to help you start not start getting out of that black hole if you find your resume being in that black hole. And again, certainly we can help you with this at PRC. Next slide. Linda, Linda did you have a question? Oh, OK. Sorry. Um, no, I was just going to respond to what she summarized. Sorry, I didn't oh. realize we weren't interactive. I'm sorry. If you have a question, have a question yeah, if you have any questions throughout, uh, we're keeping it pretty casual. So if any, you have any questions about the slides or anything, just you can raise your hand and ask it. Sure. All right, please feel free to ask a question. If not, I can answer any questions at the end of this. So, okay. Um, so what we wanted to do now in the presentation is just show you a sample job description. And then we're gonna so show you some ways that you yourself can see if your resume is matching the keywords in the job description. So this is just a sample job description from College to Page. And next slide. What we did is we used a free online application called Tag Crowd that helps you really visualize the words that are in, say, a job description. So what we did is we took that job description and we put it into Tag Cloud. And what it did is it showed us the most popular words that were being used. So next slide you can see. So this 
Tag Cloud gives you those keywords that were coming from the job description. And I think in the next slide, you can see specifically, um, oh, this shows how you can do it. So it's super easy, it's free. You can go to tagcloud.com and you can upload that job description to see what the most um, used keywords are. And then next slide. Yeah, and then this is the um, College of DuPage job description. So what this does for you as an applicant is that it gives you a visual of what words are being repeated over and over again and repeated the most in that job description. So now you can use look at this tag cloud and say, okay, if administrative and assistant and student are used the most in the job description, I better look at my resume and make sure I have those same words not inserting the words if you've never you know, been an assistant or if you've never worked with students, but just so that you get an understanding of what is being used and repeated most in the job description so that you can, you know, if you have done those things and you're a good fit, you wanna make sure your resume uses those keywords. Next slide. Um, and again, so we actually use Tag Cloud, the same, um, the same software and we put the resume into Tag Cloud, and you can see that um, the things that were in uh, Mary's resume or the sample resume um, are a little bit different than what the actual um, job description was in Tag Cloud. So that's where we need to come together and, and meet those things. Make sure that your resume is matching what um, the keywords are in the job description and then vice versa. Next slide. Okay, so not just for Tag Cloud, but there are a couple different um, programs online that you can use. So for instance, JobScan is another tool. It gives you, you can upload your resume um, in it, and it gives you um, the instant analysis, if you will, of how your resume is tailored to a job. So again, job description resume, and then job scan shows you how much your resume matches that job description. There's also um, the um, third one down, resume worded. It actually does the same thing, but it uses LinkedIn and also your resume. So you know, imagine if a hiring manager is interested in get your application, they might also be using LinkedIn to check out your um, experience and knowledge and skills. So that's actually a good tool where you can see that both your resume and link LinkedIn match the job description. Skill Syncer is again, free program online where you can scan your resume and see if it matches. So lots of free online tools that we hope these will help um, you if you're on your own trying to match your trying to match the job description with your resume. All right, next slide. Okay. This is just kind of a fun little quiz, um, resume versus robots questionnaire. Um, so the first one is which of those resumes would get through an ATS? So you can just do this in your head. Um, second question is how many companies use applicant tracking systems um, to filter out the resumes? All right. And then um, what are the, um, sorry, I can't read that last one. Paul, what does it say? So uh, what are the best methods to get a job? So oh, it's okay. best methods to get a job. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know why that wasn't showing on my computer. Okay, best methods to get a job. All right, so just in your head, think about the best answers. And then next slide, we'll give you what are the best answers. So um, first one is the third one, right? Because it doesn't have um, any sort of, it has the best font um, and things like that. So we have like, a, definitely not B, right? Um, so third one's the best. Um, and then second question is 95%, 90 to 95% of companies use um, applicant tracking systems. So you wanna be very aware of that as we talked about. And then the third one, best methods to get a job. Definitely see you want to try to receive a referral from a current company employee and apply directly on the company's website. All right, next slide. Okay, great. All right. Um, another little 
questionnaire. Um, ATS reads Microsoft Word, MS Word, and Word in the same program. So again, just kind of do this in your head. Um, career objective, um, should you put that on or is it a waste of space? And then which format for the dates of employment are correct that we talked about. All right, next slide. All right, here's the quiz. So you can see first the resume with no font and no pictures and lines um, was the correct one, 90%. 90, 95% of employers now use ATSs to screen resumes. Um, definitely wanna receive a referral and apply directly on the website if you can. Um, and then a couple of things like Arial, use that font. Um, also depends on the situation. Sorry, I forgot that question. Um, <laughs> We have true, false, true, false. And then of course the dates, which is one of the most important things because that can really get you um, caught if you're not formatting exactly right. Okay, good. So just a little, just a little quiz. Um, all right, and I think this is important to know because we've been really focusing on applicant tracking systems and getting through that robot. Human, pro the process of getting hired is still human. And that's the most important thing to remember, right? Like networking is more important than ever. If you see a job, if you can possibly find someone to talk to or to get your resume to at the company, that is great. Not that you can't just apply online, but if you have it in at that company, definitely use it. Um, and you know, things like um, once you get past the ATS, you still have to have an interview. So that's another thing that we can help you with here at PRC that you know once you get called for the interview we can help you present yourself best since you know getting called for an interview and getting your resume through the ATS is just half of the process all right now I'm going to give it back to Paul um, just kind of summary on my presentation part is PRC job coaches can help you and also you know take time when applying to really look does the job description match the resume that I'm sending in um, and that's going to help you get through the applicant tracking systems and out of that black hole. All right, take it away, Paul. Sure. Thank you so much, Sarah. I really appreciate it. Um, so if you kind of like what you hear and you're thinking that you're interested in uh, becoming a PRC client uh, and getting a job coach, uh, I'm just going to run through real quick how to apply. So uh, easiest way to do it is to call the 630-682-5402 extension 333. Uh, from there, you'll be, uh, when you call that number, it'll go straight to voicemail and you would just leave your name, uh, your contact information and kind of what you're looking for. And we have uh, two administrative assistants that check the phone lines daily. So somebody will usually give you a call within 24 hours to do a quick intake for you and set you up for the uh, job assistant orientation. And we run those uh, twice per month. Uh, so just a quick reminder about some of the services that we offer. Our job coaching uh, is probably our most popular. Uh, you would get your own um, individual job coach. Uh, and, they, and, and I always like to say is it's individualized mentoring. So there's no, uh, there's no curriculum that you have to go through. There's, uh, you know, your job coach will meet you where you're at in your job search. So, uh, you know, we have clients that come in all the time and, hey, they just need help uh, practicing how to answer interview questions. Or we have some clients that come in and say, hey, I really need to know how to apply for jobs, I need to know how to interview, I need to know how to dress, they, they, need, they need a little bit more support. We, all of our job coaches have, uh, just like Sarah, have extensive experience working with people and helping them find jobs, so we can help you with whatever you need. Uh, if you wanna learn more about uh, what we offer at uh, the People's Resource Center, you could just go to our website. So it's peoplesrc.org. Um, go to the top left-hand corner, you can see the services tab, you can see all the different services that we offer. I always like to showcase the uh, computer training program. So if you're looking to um, you know, bulk up your computer skills, we do offer uh, Microsoft Office certifications free of charge to PRC clients. So uh, that's a great thing to complete to get the certification. And it's something that you can put on your resume to make you stand out. So that's a really good thing to do as well. Uh, and again, it's also free of charge to uh, PRC job clients. Um, we also have you know, outside of that number that I just mentioned, if you prefer to do things directly online, um, under the how to get started, you'll see the number there, but below you'll see if you'd rather do the program online, click here. If you click there, that's going to take you to a Google form and you can uh, complete the Google form. It's just five or six questions. Just give, give us an idea of what we're looking for. 
And then uh, once you hit submit, that'll go directly to our administrative assistants and they'll give you a call to uh, register you for orientation. So there's two ways that you can get involved. So um, final thoughts, wanna kind of open it up uh, if anybody has any questions or comments, anything that we can help you with right now. How can we see the, the recording again? I'll send, uh, Megan, I'll send you the recording um, as soon as as soon as we're done. And then, uh, Megan, I don't know if you have, if you guys post that directly on to your website. Um, we'll probably post it on our YouTube channel. I can um, also send you the link once it's posted, Rosie. OK, thank you for everything. Very You're informative. welcome. Thank you. And Linda, I saw you had a question, too. Yes, I do. Um, I'm applying for a PRC position, the um, literacy, adult literacy. Oh, the literacy coordinator. Coordinator. Yeah. And I would like very much to talk a little bit more with Sarah. Is there any way I could have an appointment with her? Are you, uh, are you currently a, a PRC client? I am, and Charles Holt has been helping me. And actually, we met today, and we went over a lot of things. Um, so I don't know if that's um, a possibility to also talk with Sarah. Yeah, you know that that's no problem. I have no problem with that. Why don't we just? Um, I can give you my email, um, my right. PRC email, and you can reach out to me. And in fact, if anyone else um, has questions about the um, presentation, I'll just give it right now. So my email, um, my PRC email is P, um, PRC, so people yes. use PRC, and then Sarah, S-A-R-A-H-H, -H, so two H's, at gmail.com. So PRC, Sarah,